When discussing the Caribbean's history in general, and Puerto Rico's history in particular, you can't overlook the tales of legendary pirates popularized through books and movies such as Pirates of the Caribbean. One such legendary pirate who has captured the imagination was Roberto El Pirata Cafresi. Born on June 17, 1791 in Cabo Rojo, Puerto Rico, Cofresi entered this world during tough political and economic times for the island of Puerto Rico. Although born to a noble family, the economic climate rendered them poor. Cofresi worked at sea from an early age, and this allowed him to become very familiar with the region's geography, knowledge which would be useful later. However, a sailor's life did not provide much in terms of income. It should be noted that before Cofresi bore the title pirate, he led a criminal gang in San Helman which stole cattle, food, and crops. These activities all happened in the context of devastating economic instability for the island, which rendered it much like the Wild West, and Cofresi just made the best out of the situation. Unfortunately for Cofresi, in July of 1821, he and his gang were captured due to being involved in the highway robbery of some very prominent individuals. They were tried, convicted, and put in jail. A month later, Cofresi managed to escape. His whereabouts were unknown for the next year and a half. He would appear again in 1823 on the crew of the ship El Scipion, captained by Jose Ramon Torres. Although this ship was supposed to be legitimate, it employed questionable tactics later associated with piracy, such as flying the flag of powerful states to gain access to other ships. It was here where Corfresi honed his skills and probably decided to become a pirate. What's interesting about Corfresi becoming a pirate was that piracy was almost on its way out. Piracy at that time was heavily monitored by authorities and most pirates were rarely successful. However, Cofresi was not only very successful, but he established himself as the dominant pirate of his era. Cofresi was confirmed to have plundered at least eight vessels and has been credited with over 70 captures. One of Cofresi's best well-known acts of piracy occurred on June 12, 1823, when he and his crew captured a ship loaded with coffee and West Indian indigo. The hijackers brought the ship to the Isla de Mona, a small island between Puerto Rico and Hispaniola. Upon unloading the cargo, the pirates supposedly killed the sailors and sunk the ship. However, some historians have mentioned that Cofresi had a rule of engagement, that when a vessel was captured, those willing to join his crew were permitted to live. Cofresi's brothers were also involved in his operations. Since one of them worked at a port, they were instrumental in the success of his raid since they had information regarding the maritime traffic. Cofresi was also seen as a type of Robin Hood when it came to sharing his loot. He was known for being generous with those in need, especially family members and close friends. Cofresi's pirate activities continued with great success in the following months. This was an oddity considering this was nearly a century after the end of the golden age of piracy. This made his capture even more urgent. After a series of successful pirate activities, Cofresi and his crew were caught up in a major storm on September 8th, 9th, 1824. This storm drove their ship to drift towards Hispaniola. Cofresi and his men were captured after his ship reached Santo Domingo. They were sentenced to six years in prison. Cofresi and his men escaped, were recaptured, and again imprisoned. However, Cofresi and his men managed to escape again. This time they reached the province of San Pedro de Macorís, bought a ship, and sailed in late September to Naguabo, Puerto Rico, and from there to the island of Yeques, where they set up a new hideout and regrouped. By late October of 1824, the resurgence of piracy caused by the success of Corfesi and his crew had been dramatically reduced, with Corfesi remaining the main target of concern. However, Corfesi emerged even stronger and with more success
than he had before. He had more men and more ships than before, making him an even greater threat. And the following months, they pulled off an even greater series of pirate acts than they had before. However, it wouldn't be long before one of the last legends of piracy would come to a halt. By the spring of 1825, Cofresi and his crew commanded a flotilla led by their main ship at the time, Anne. By then, this was the last substantial pirate threat in the Caribbean. After sighting of the flotilla, a task force was set up involving the Grampus, San Jose, and Las Animas. They encountered Cofresi's flotilla on March 5th and mounted a surprise attack. Caught off guard and unable to properly defend against the attack, Cofresi grounded the ship Anne and fled inland. By the next day, Cofresi and his remaining crew had been captured. Cofresi himself had been ambushed by gunfire while he was fleeing. He continued to fight back with a knife until he was subdued by militia machetes. After his capture, authorities were in a rush to convict due to international scrutiny of the resurgence of pirate activities, with Cofresi being public enemy number one. Cofresi and his crew hardly received a fair trial. He received a hurried council of war trial. The only rights granted to the pirates was to choose their lawyers and their defense arguments were limited. They were convicted and sentenced to death. On the morning of March 29, 1825, Cofresi and his men were executed by firing squad in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Roberto Cofresi supposedly said he had killed 400 persons with his own hands, but never to his knowledge had he ever killed a native of Puerto Rico. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Help us to spread this video by sharing. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more videos.